Wow. Wow. Go. What a moment that is. Uh, that is former. How about that? Former St. Peter's coach Shaheen Holloway, former Seton Hall Pirate player Shaheen Holloway, current Seton Hall head coach Holloway introducing his former team one by one. They all stand up and they get a standing ovation at his introductory press conference. Uh, speaking of introductions, Myron Metcalf, I think it's your first time on the show, Myron. Uh, college basketball it, guru extraordinaire from ESPN. What's up? And, and, and let's start here, man. I, I'm, I'm so excited to have you on the show and I'm excited to talk about Holloway. Just the job he was able to do at St. Peter's before we even get into what he's going to do at Seton Hall. Just how do you put that in, into perspective? The first 15 seed to make the, make it to the Elite Eight. I think it's the greatest run in NCAA tournament history. Honestly, you know, I mean, had he gotten to the final four, that would add another layer to it. But if you look at the teams that he beat, I mean, he beat Kentucky. I mean, he beat teams that are established Purdue. Those are the top three offenses in uh, America. He beat a Murray State team that had lost in three months. So I, I think he put together the greatest run we've ever seen. I mean, not even just by a 15 seed, but by any team. And that's nothing against George Mason. That's nothing against the VCUs, nothing against UMBC beat Virginia. A couple years ago as a one seed, as a 16 seed, but I don't think we've ever seen anything like what Shaheen Holloway did. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. You, I thought you were to follow on Seton Hall. No, 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 no. Go ahead. No, no, no. Well, on Shaheen Holloway, uh, Myron, I was going to ask you just about his prospects at Seton Hall. I mean, not only was it classy, but warranted to give that team a standing ovation because that's how you got Shaheem Holloway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not, yeah. not only is he a former player, but you know, he's coming in on, a, on certainly a, a high note greatest run in tournament history as you just called it. Uh, could you break down his prospects for success at Seton Hall? Obviously comes in with a lot of credibility, a lot of familiarity. How can he translate that to greater heights for that uh, story program? I think you've seen a lot of young coaches kind of come into college basketball who can relate to these guys. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of old school guys who are having success as well. But certainly, I think being a younger guy, the energy attached to that. You know, I remember Shaka Smart and being at his practices in Texas. And, yeah. You know, he's still practicing with his guys. You know, he's still out there demonstrating things on the court. I think that's an advantage for a guy like Holloway uh, and just what he can do, honestly, physically in the energy. Uh, and then you look at what he did at St. Peter's. Certainly people are going to believe that he can do the same thing at Seton Hall. I think he's going to find a way to get really good prospects, top players. I think transfers are going to play with him. Like, I think what he did with this run at St. Peter's is he marketed himself as a guy that you would want to play for, a guy you'd want to send your son to. Uh, I think that's going to be a good team in that league here in the next years. All right, so uh, turning our attention to the Final Four, you mentioned something we never seen before. You got country music singers canceling concerts on Saturday night so that they could watch the first ever Duke UNC tournament game, let alone one in the Final Four. As you watch Michael Holly shake his head because he just detests Duke. Uh, <laughs> so I'll ask, I'll ask it this way for my boy: How is North Carolina? going to knock off Duke and end this Hollywood run in Coach K's final season. How, how are they going to do it? I think you're welcome, Michael. How are they going to yeah. do it? I mean, the same way they did it a couple weeks ago at Cameron Indoor Stadium. I mean, they have the edge. They know how to beat Duke. They did it in the craziest environment possible. You had more than 90 former Duke players in the building. Adam Silver and Jerry Seinfeld were there for some reason, uh, and they still found a way to win. So. I mean, between Brady Manic and what he can do, I think he's a key player. Six foot nine can spread the floor, hit shots inside, outside. Armando Baycott, I think, has been a phenomenal player in the paint. I mean, Hubert has a really modern NBA style offense. Sometimes he'll have five guys out on the perimeter. So that's how you're going to beat Duke. I mean, that's how North Carolina can. However, I've been in San Francisco for the last week with Duke, and I've watched them closely, and they're getting better and better 
And I think they're by far the most talented team in New Orleans right now. So uh, what is that about? Because I, I, you, I don't know what the stat is. You would know it better than I would. Is it the last six or the last seven number one recruiting classes for Coach K? I mean, it's been a bunch of them. And they, this, I think this is the first group to actually make it to the Final Four, if I'm not mistaken. So why, why has it been so difficult for recently for him to take these guys, these talented guys, and then get them collectively to realize their talent? Well, remember, freshmen don't win national championships, right? That's the biggest myth about the one-and-done era. Two teams have done it since the NBA changed their age limit. You had 2012 Kentucky with Anthony Davis. You had 2015 Duke. So Coach K did do it with that Duke team in 2015. Other than that, no team being led by a freshman during that era has won a national championship. Some people want to add Carmelo and Syracuse to that. That's fine. But that was before the age limit. So I think that's the biggest thing is young guys don't get to this stage and win big. And that's not a Coach K thing. That's an everybody thing. But also that you got to have the right combination of talent. Uh, and this year, I think he does. Paulo Bancaro is the toughest matchup uh, in college basketball right now. Mark Williams, the seven-footer, defending the rim, running the floor. I think he has the right pieces this year uh, that have allowed him to get to this stage in his final season. Just an incredible collection of teams. I know, you know, from reading your work, you know, you think Kansas is not getting enough love uh, as, as a potential champion. And, of course, we'll see what Jay Wright could do with Villanova without Justin Moore, but they certainly got a lot of depth to lean on. So we'll just put you on the spot, man. Uh, who do you like to take it all, to cut down the nets come Monday night? Well, I like on Saturday, I like Duke to beat Carolina. I think this is a better all right. team than the one we saw a month ago that lost to Carolina. I think Kansas probably beats Villanova by, I don't know, 10, 11 points. And then I think Kansas okay. beats Duke in the national championship game. I think Kansas wow. is playing the best basketball right now, and I think Kansas is going to win that game. All right. Uh, hey, hey. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Now you talk about Kansas and they're not getting enough love. What is it? Uh, you know, Bill Self is he's no stranger uh, to having great teams at, at Kansas and at Illinois. Had some great teams, but uh, what, what is it about this group? Is there a, a particular player or a particular thing that they do that really makes makes Kansas stand out? I think Remy Martin coming on strong at the end of this season. He transferred from Arizona State. Averaged 19.1 points per game in back-to-back -back seasons at Arizona State, but he's been trying to find a rhythm at Kansas. Uh, he was hurt for a lot of the year, but now he's healthy and he's playing really well. Like to me, with Remy Martin emerging right now, it's kind of like an NBA team adding an all-star at the trade deadline. That's what Kansas has essentially done with Remy Martin playing the way that he's playing. And it just adds another dynamic to an already good team. I, I just think Kansas is one of those teams that'll pounce on you and they will not let you up. Uh, and with Remy Martin playing the way that he's playing, I think they're the most difficult team to defend in New Orleans. All right, man. Hey, enjoy my city. And uh, we enjoy talking to you. Good to see you, Myron. Thank you so much, man. Thank good you, Good to Myron. see you, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. All right, man. Be good. Anytime. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.